Welcome, everyone. This is Kathy Nixon, the Education Director for the DPC Ed Center. And welcome to our December webinar on what's so funny about kidney disease. I think that you all enjoy the program today. Uh, we'll learn a lot about health benefits of laughter. And I have to say the two speakers have made me smile and laugh just by what they've both told me as, as well as when they send emails. Um, humor is, is a great thing, and I can tell even when I smile that it feels good. Uh, just a reminder before we get started, all of your lines are muted. You can unmute your phone by hitting pound six to ask questions at the end of the presenta presentation. And then mute is star six after you ask your questions so everybody doesn't hear any background noise. Or you can ask questions through the chat box. And you're welcome to ask questions throughout the webinar um, through the chat box. And then, as I said, at the end, we'll open up the phone line. You'll also receive the link the recording as well as the slides, and you will receive some uh, resources by email. And we encourage you and hope that you'll complete the feedback form at the end of our program. Your feedback is really important to us as we plan our programs for next year for both our webinars as well as for our newsletters. So please let us know what works for you. I am so very happy to be able to welcome two humorists our program. And they're both friends and colleagues and have shared a lot of laughs together. They're also the co-founders of the World Laughter Tour. Karen Buxman is a nurse and a neurohumorist, which means she researches the neurobiology of humor. She's written a number of, of books, has a busy speech engagement schedule uh, during which she enlightens, she educates, she entertains her audiences. Um, and Steve Wilson, who some of you know from a couple of our past webinars, um, is both a psychologist and humorist. Uh, he is an educator and has trained over 7,000 laughter therapists. He's also the director of Humor Month, which is in April. And um, he's also written books and articles, and he writes articles for us at DPC Ed Center. And he's also an active member of our DPC Education Center Advisory Council. And now I'll turn the program over to Steve and Karen. And Steve, would you like to start your interview with Karen? I'm delighted. Thank you, Kathy. That, here we go again. This is uh, so exciting, so important. Karen, how you doing? Oh, man, Steve, if I was any better, I'd be you. <laughs> I heard if I was any better, I'd be twins. Now, I never knew what that meant, but I like the idea of it somehow. Um, welcome. You know, I, we are spanning um, the uh, the United States. And you're, uh, you're in California right now? That's right. Through the miracle of, and the, through the miracle of modern technology, I'm in Ohio and in the Midwest, almost to the right coast, but we've got people from coast to coast uh, paying attention to What's so funny about kidney disease? Uh, I, I'm so uh, thrilled to be able to have this conversation with you. Um, we used to spend a lot of time together, and we both have gotten so busy that uh, we haven't been able to do it. But uh, you uh, have – I, I would like, to, like you to say something about how you got involved with the whole topic of uh, – illness, you know, like kidney disease, and I know you've been involved in helping people uh, cope and deal with, manage other kinds of illnesses, um, and the humor laughter thing. Um, yeah. We've both been doing it for probably 30 years. Yeah, so yeah. I think it's good for the, for the folks who are listening in to know that there have been people working on this topic for a long time, trying to make... Uh, opportunities for people to live their best lives no matter what's going on. Uh, and uh, you have been um, inspiring with the idea that uh, if we can somehow use humor and laughter, that we can cope and manage and, and enjoy life more. Well, what you what I... was it, do you think, that 
what was it through you into it you you know this a lot of people want to know gosh how do you get to be a neurohumorist (laughs) but this actually started and was born out of my graduate research back in the late 80s so this year actually does mark 30 years um and for us in this industry and uh, you know i i started back there we are so yeah, this was this was a, a few years ago. Uh, Steve was receiving the Lifetime Achievement Award from the Association for Applied and Therapeutic Humor for all of his work and dedication in the field. Um, it's an organization that's near to near and dear to both of our hearts, and we'll list that as a resource later. The uh, Association for Applied and Therapeutic Humor. But this is something that uh, when I came across this as a potential research topic. Uh, so little was being done in the field, and particularly in my field, which is healthcare and nursing, which was my background. And when I saw just how powerful this was and how people were missing so many opportunities, because we understand the power of humor to entertain, but few people were really understanding the power of humor to heal or the power of humor to influence. And so this is this became my life's mission and my life's work. And um, I couldn't be happier to have made that decision. And 30 years has gone by in a heartbeat. And just for the record, um, it's not that we're old. We just started really young. <laughs> That's right. Uh, I was uh, um, five and you were four. <laughs> right, right. Uh, you know, the Association for Applied and Therapeutic Humor one of the two major organizations in the world that tries to deal with the subject. And we're, I, I, that organization, its original name years ago was NFL. But it wasn't about football. It stood for Nurses for, for Laughter. After. Yeah, we've been and through a few. You're back. Yeah. Yes. But, but you are a nurse. That was your training, you know, that got you sort of moving in this direction, isn't it? Correct. Correct. And and Vera Robinson, who both of us knew as a real icon in this industry, was one of the founding members of NSL, NFL, along with Allison Crane out of Chicago, um, and later became the American Association for Therapeutic Humor, and then ultimately the Association for Applied and Therapeutic Humor, um, which just so happened conveniently to have the same acronym, so we didn't have to change everything. But uh, yeah, and this, you know, you know it, out of it, this fun, go ahead. Well, I'm just going to say that it's uh, interesting how these things evolve and, and, and then still are evolving, but starting out as something pretty local, uh, pretty much to the United States uh, and, and, you know, thinking, oh, this is a national organization, then changing the name uh, taking out American association, just it's, to have a global input. Technology has allowed us to reach the whole world. Right, right. And out of that spun lots of other organizations, which, um, which again, we'll touch upon um, a little bit later. But for you, um, World Laughter Tour, which, you know, we both had the opportunity to, to bring to the U.S., Gosh, that was back in the late 90s, so that's been a long time, and, and you've grown that into an incredible global organization. Um, you know, the, the Journal of Nursing Jocularity was something that came about early in those days as well, um, which was a magazine available for, you know, 10 years or so, and really helped also move the needle in this industry. But you and I as individuals, I think, you know, in our own ways have brought this to um, literally millions of people around the globe, and you know I'm very I'm very proud of that because this really is something that is so so powerful and something that's going to be really helpful for the people who are joining us today because I know when you look at the the title of our presentation, what's so funny about uh, you know the, the kidney disease? It, it, some people would think, well, that almost sounds offensive, and it's not that it's it's not a joke, but it can be a laughing matter. And, you know, so, you know, you and I both understand how this comes forth because we know what's not 
funny about kidney disease. Uh, you know, I've I've had uh, yeah, and I think right. No, I, I just want to say overall, I I think we're uh, you know first of all, you and I have been very fortunate uh, to have uh, not only a, a kind of a discovered our sense of purpose, but a sense of mission with that mm -hmm. and something that's a lot of fun. But we're really I think we're talking about something called mind-body medicine. Yes. The mind and the body are connected. I wonder if, if you could reflect on that a little bit, mind-body uh, function. Sure, because this, you know, just as as kidney disease, it, it's not just the kidney that's affected. The whole person is affected. This affects your, your physical well-being. It affects your psychological well-being. It affects your social well-being. You know, it's so many of the things that you know uh, about kidney disease affect your whole life and what steve and i love about uh, humor and laughter is the holistic effect is the fact that this comes forth from psychoneuroimmunology or mind body medicine and the fact that this is a means of helping people holistically because humor provides benefits that are you know physiological psychological social and even spiritual so you know it is it's it, we can't separate one from the other can we steve so your and what we know is that our your attitude about everything that have attitude is very important what yes. you think and your and how you feel uh, emotionally um, can affect your health and can actually affect the outcomes of, of uh, healing uh, programs, of treatments. Yes. So um, so what we want to share today is uh, some aspects of how we might have some control uh, over our attitudes to, to um, uh, move in, in, in helpful and healthful directions with kidney cool. disease. Yes, yes. And so, you know, I want to want to spend lots of time talking to you uh, to, uh, you know, and for our listeners as to what's in this for them and then ultimately how this can be something that they can actually take action upon, because we don't want them to just walk away knowing about this. We want to we want people to actually take part. And for those of you who may have joined us just a minute or two late, just a, a reminder that if you are able to view your screen, you can write questions or comments in the chat. Um, we're happy to see people here from South Carolina and New York City. Um, and also at the end, we are going to have a time period where um, we will take some questions and uh, and get your input because we really want to want to make this something that is applicable to you. Um, but as you were saying, Steve, I mean, this this really is physiologically, psychologically, socially, spiritually, um, because there are so many things that people experience with the kidney disease. You know, there's fatigue, there's pain, um, they they're socially isolated from other people um, because of the regimen. It's regiment. a big worry. It's a big worry. It's, you know, work. anxiety, stress, anger. It's like, well, you know, why did this happen to me? You know, why didn't you pick on that other guy? He's a he's a creep. <laughs> I'm a good person. You know, why why is this something that happened to me? So when we talk about humor as, as having uh, the potential for being something positive uh, in this circumstance, humor and uh, and laughter, and we'll maybe we can talk about what the difference is because humor and laughter. Well, maybe we can talk about that. People yeah. often say humor and then the word laughter as if they're both the same thing, but in some respects they're different, aren't they? They really are. It's it, it, and that's great that you brought that point up because you can have humor without laughter. We're often amused at things but don't laugh about them, and we can have laughter without humor, which is part of the premise of therapeutic laughter, laughter for no reason, laughter yoga. Um, you know, each has its own um, purposes, benefits, um, and, you know, humor. I, I have a book that I'm, I'm publishing 
um, in 2019 about humor, and particularly as it relates to influence. But what I realized during the writing of this book is that humor is really this huge umbrella and that the, there's three legs to, to this stool. And there, that is, you know, humor for entertainment, humor for influence, humor for well-being. And that humor also can be broken down, as our, as our pal Steve Sultanoff has pointed out many times, the, the cognitive part of humor is, is the wit. It's the understanding of why something's funny. The mirth is the emotional part of it that, that makes you feel like something's funny. And then the physiological response is laughter. And so knowing that, that those are separate components and that really what we're talking about today, while laughter can be good for you, uh, and we'll talk about some, some ways that you can incorporate that without humor, then also humor without laughter can be good for you. And I'll also just say that a lot of times people are worried that when we say you have, you know, we, we want you to have more humor in your lives, that they're interpreting that as that we mean they need to be funnier. And that's not really what we're talking about either, is it? Yeah, that's a, that's a good point. Too. If, I, if humor is good, and we're going to get to that here shortly, if humor is good for us, seeing uh, maybe the less serious side of things, that, that sometimes is, is an easy definition of, of humor. It's being able to see the less serious side. All situations have many sides, uh, and they're not all equally serious. Right. And if you can find a side that's not as serious, uh, you might get a chuckle uh, out of it. And, and then there's a, we know now more about the physiology of laughter. The science of laughter tells us that laughter is good for us. And I, one of the most fascinating things for me uh, learning about this uh, was to discover that people who are born blind and deaf laugh. Yeah, we're uh, hardwired. That laughing, yes, we're hard. We're we're we come created with a connection to laughter under the right circumstances. Right. Uh, you know, wa uh, when you're comfortable, when you're not in pain, and sometimes we can even overcome that if you are in pain and uh, having difficulty. Uh, but um, people, uh, I mean, infants uh, laugh not because they're getting a joke. When when a, when, a, when a baby laughs in the in the in the crib or the cradle, we don't run over and say, "Gee, she has a great sense of humor." Right. Um, something else is something is going on, and uh, it's not laughter. This physical act that we can do that feels good, is so much fun, there's so many benefits for us. It's not something you learn from other people necessarily. Right. You're born with the ability to do it, and. Uh, you want to help people capitalize on that, and you don't have to be funny. You don't have to be a comedian right. to, to get this and to bring this into your life and make it work for you. Right, right. And, you know, the fact is that humor has the ability to help lessen pain. Um, there's there's different ways that, that it can do that, whether it's releasing you know, particular hormones in your body or whether it's through distraction. Uh, it can relieve um, psychological discomfort. It helps people who are experiencing stress and anxiety. It helps lessen that. It even helps give people who are angry a way to communicate in a way that is what we call socially acceptable, you know, that it doesn't tick other people off when you're expressing your anger. And, you know, right. socially, I find this interesting because I, I heard once that the only two tools you need in your toolbox are, um, you know, WD-40 and duct tape. You know, if it moves and it shouldn't, use duct tape. And if it doesn't move <laughs> and it should, use WD-40. And the cool thing is humor does yep. both because it acts like duct tape. It bonds people. It strengthens relationship and rapport. But it also acts like WD-40 because it lowers resistance. And it's it's been called a social lubricant. It helps things go more easily at those times like, you know, people have holiday dinners coming up and it's like, oh boy, nothing, nothing says fun like a family dinner with, with relatives that you'd rather not be spending time with. But humor can help, you know, ease that friction. And so, yeah, I mean, you've got a complete toolbox at your disposal and you can use it anywhere and anytime at your discretion. 
Right, and and we do we want to help people learn some more about what what that's about and how to use it, how to use that toolbox. And and this, we're not just talking about um, find things that are funny about uh, uh, kidney disease or find things that are funny about dialysis. It's uh, very helpful, and we know from various kinds of research uh, with people with heart attack, cardiac things, like rehab, and that kind. Of, find something that's funny to you, not necessarily about the condition, um, but is there something on television, America's uh, Funniest Home Videos? Is there, is there some show you like to watch, or uh, you know, a comic strip you like to read? Uh, just to get that tickle your own funny moment. Yeah, and that will be yeah. helpful. You know, I, I was doing a presentation uh, for a, a group uh, on business continuity related to disasters. And, you know, we were talking about global disasters and national disasters. And then it occurred to me that, you know, what people are experiencing, even with kidney disease, that's a personal disaster for some people. And I realized that in, in a disaster situation, humor can help with by distracting, reframing, and refueling, and you know what you're talking about. Wait, wait say those words again. Distract. Say those, three words. Distract, say. reframe, and refuel. You know, humor. Oh, let's we hear can, about those. Tell us, yeah. tell us about. Well, because humor, you know, is is something that you it can take your mind off of things. There's often times where humor isn't going to fix what's wrong. Um. I remember uh, a time where I was, uh, Greg and I had theater tickets and we were, we had been looking forward to this forever and we got busy on a project on one Sunday and then all of a sudden he holds up the clock and I look at it and, or he holds up the tickets and I was like, oh my gosh, I can't wait, I can't wait, I can't wait, you know, and we're going to go and we're going to have so much fun and he goes, it was at one o'clock this afternoon. And I was so oh. devastated. I was so upset. We had prepared and gotten excited about that for weeks. And he said, you know, stay here, stay here, stay here. Close your eyes, close your eyes. And he went over to one of my favorite funny movies, pulled it up and cued it to, um, you know, a, a funny part of the movie and, and put it on. And, you know, when I sat down, I was almost kind of mad at him because I just wanted to be mad. I just wanted to be upset, but I couldn't stop laughing. And it didn't change the situation that we didn't get to go to the theater, but it was a distraction until I could get that emotional space to realize, you know what, this hasn't changed the earth's rotation. Um, you know, whereas other the times, it gives you the perspectives. It gives you a little time to have that perspective. Uh, you know, I use it frequently when I'm on an airplane or stuck in traffic. You know, it's like it's not going to make the plane or the car move any faster if you're sitting in a doctor's office or you're in dialysis and you're waiting, you know, for your session to be over. It's not going to make the dialysis go faster. It's not going to make it go away. But it can sure improve the quality of time that you're spending. You know, you can spend that time perhaps in dialysis listening to something that amuses you or you can be reading about politics. You know, which do you think is going to be healthier for your body? <laughs> I can tell you right now. Well, not, yeah. If you want to lower your As cortisol. Somebody said that. Go, right. yeah. Laughter and humor are instant vacations. Yes. It's, it's, it's even momentary time out. We know uh, now from studies uh, uh, that we can rely on uh, that uh, laughter discharges emotional tension uh, when we're in, when we're having a good laugh uh, the stress hormones are reduced uh, we're, we're, we're in better balance yes it's not that again not that we're saying laugh about kidney disease laugh at what's funny to you you right. know most people don't have a sense of humor most of us have have many senses of humor Right. And different things would strike us funny with different groups of people or at different times or different moods. And uh, boy, exercising that, capitalizing on that, uh, I think that's a good idea. I think when you're, when you're laughing uh, and, and seeing the lighter side of something, it can be your personal take on it. 
And somebody yes. says, what's so funny? You know, there are these laugh stealers who yes. want to know what's so funny. And, and I, I'm always encouraging uh, folks to, to say, listen, you know, I'm trying to make my quota. I need some laughter every day. I can't always explain what's funny or why I'm laughing, but uh, leave me alone. Let me finish my laugh. I need yes. it. It's good for me. Yes. Yes. Best not to think about what's so funny or why it's funny, because that pulls you into the cognitive part of your brain and it kills the laugh. Yeah. So, you know, so that's, that's, right. that's the power of distraction. Um, I think that's huge. I also think reframing is one of the best things that humor can help us do because it gives us that perspective that, and allows us to play with our pain. Um, you know, I, I again, there's a, com comedians have a lot of techniques to make things funny that we can pull into our lives, not to, you know, not to entertain other people, but basically to entertain ourselves. And, you know, when you play with your pain, the other, the other day I was uh, in a car with my good friend, um, Heidi, and we were running late and she was stressing out and she said, you know, we're going to be late. We're going to be late. We're going to be late. And then she goes, um, all right, how could this be worse? You know, she started playing with it, you know, well, we could be stuck in the car and, you know, we could be stuck with, you know, somebody in the back seat who's pregnant in an active labor. I mean, you know, that <laughs> it's like, uh, you know, just how, again, just what's Easy. funny. What's funny to you? Bring I your mean, imagination. It's you totally bring your imagination into it. Bringing in uh, Tim Gard calls it comic vision. Um, you know, imagining people in their um, underwear. You know, in the other cars, or um, you know, some reframing questions that you can ask yourself. A, a social worker in one of my presentations told me the question he asks himself to reframe is has this changed the earth's rotation? And I love that because I'll ask myself that periodically when I'm, when I'm feeling upset, you know, is, has this changed the earth's rotation? No. Is it okay to find a way to play with the pain? Yes. You know, exaggerate it or downplay it or twist it and turn it around. Um, make fun of it. Um, you know, Okay. Uh, a T-shirt that somebody uh, told me about that somebody was wearing in uh, or is a button that they wore to dialysis. And they said um, that what was it? Dialysis. Di dialysis patients do it three times a week, you know, and it's just one of those plays on a, a phrase or um, ooh baby, nice kidneys. Um, Monday, Wednesday, Fridays are all in vain. I mean, these were ways that people oh. reframed it, played with the pain, because, you know, Steve, you and I know, but a lot of people don't realize that so much humor from adults comes from pain and discomfort. You know, a lot, you know, some pain oh, unfortunately, comes from joy, and that's what we see in kids. But the good news is people who are experiencing pain, you've got a lot of material. <laughs> I was thinking of a couple of T-shirts, and you said that. I love the T-shirt idea because – it's evidence that you don't have to be funny. You can find a humorous shirt to wear. Uh, right. Pam, my wife Pam, has a T-shirt that says, my next husband will be normal. Oh. Uh, so we, uh, so I'm taking a joke on myself. She's wearing that, and we're having yeah. fun with that. Uh, we've got another T-shirt that says, eat, drink, and remarry. Oh, that's uh, funny. You know, now, and, and again, there are so many different senses of humor uh, that, a particular comment may or may not be funny to a particular person, but if it's funny to you, that's very important. And we wanted to use, of course, use humor that uh, pulls people together and lifts people up and, and right. not necessarily the ones that jokes that put people down. I, I was thinking of the uh, picture I saw in a newspaper uh, of a man whose, whose car had been crushed by a tree during a storm. And um, he's standing down. He made a sign to hold up to the traffic going by, and the sign had an arrow pointing to his car, and the sign said, compact car. Wow, and, oh, that's uh, wonderful. He, I mean, he, really, uh, is that a way of yeah, reframing? Yeah, and he found uh, And so we'd look for 
look for bumper stickers. If you go into a card shop, you're going to send somebody a, a card, a Get Well card, for instance. Uh, maybe look for the funny ones. Look for the humorous ones. Somebody said that the Get Well cards have gotten so humorous these days that if you don't get sick, you're missing half the fun. Oh, that's great. That's great. That is funny. Uh, you know, you, you yeah. reminded me of some ways that other people have recently reframed um, similar instances, you know, after the hurricanes uh, or during the flooding where, you know, somebody had put a sign in front of their house, which was now partially underwater that said, um, you know, for sale, waterfront property, price reduced. Um, there you go. A friend of mine, I thought, did a beautiful job of reframing when uh, – her her identity got stolen. Now, that's not funny. Um, but she started telling herself and then others, I'm the only person I know of whose credit rating went up when I got my identity stolen. You know, and it was it was a okay. it was a great yeah. way to reframe and play with the pain. And we're we're not saying that that the pain isn't important and that you don't need to take it seriously. But to give yourself some relief and to give yourself um, some bandwidth. The, these are the kinds of techniques and tools that you can use. And so one of my first pieces of advice to people is just the mantra, see funny. And by that, it's not just looking for things, it's listening for things, it's raising your awareness for things. And like you said, things that are funny to you they might not be funny to someone else and so that's part of my challenge to people is you know go forth every day and see funny what what is it that you might be missing now some people push back and go well Karen you don't understand there's nothing funny happening in my life and here's something that I've come to realize and I think part of this is is come with age and I, I so appreciate it and that is, if that is your belief, that will be your reality. And if you believe there's nothing That's, funny happening in your right. life, it won't matter how much we tell you and give you pieces of advice. Um, you won't see it. You won't experience it. You have to, the first thing you have to do is be open to it. That's right. And, 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 and experiment with it and try it out and, and, uh, Find your own uh, the senses of humor and the things that are funny to you, and they don't have to be funny. To, uh, we, we don't want to impose humor on people. We want right. to invite them to laugh. You know, it, it, the wonderful it, thing about true. humor in the brain, and this is something that I've stumbled upon, you know, with, with neuro humor, is that we're given a device in our brain, a part of our brain that really helps us with this, and it's called the reticular activating system. And this little finger-like mm -hmm. projection in the back of our brain is a filter. And when you give your attention to something, the brain says, oh, you gave your attention to that. You might want more of that. And this filter helps you see and experience more of that. And people who are listening and joining us, to, you know, you probably had that experience where you bought a red car and your brain said, oh, you're giving attention to that. And now you go out on the highway and you think, where did all these red cars come from? Or somebody that you work with is pregnant. And then pretty soon you notice, oh, somebody in that department's pregnant. And somebody in that department's pregnant. Oh, my God, what's in the water? Everybody's pregnant. They were all there before. But now <laughs> your brain has you, given you. You, put, the, you, you. you plant the seed in your mind of what you're going to focus on. Uh, if you're driving uh into a strange uh town for instance and you're hungry um the chances are what you're going to start to notice are restaurants yes and, yes uh, you know grocery stores if, if you're driving into that same town uh you're not hungry but your car engine's making a funny noise yes you're gonna you're gonna start that's in your that's in your mind now you're gonna start to notice mechanics and gas stations and you know so if you say there must be something humorous in here. Let me see if I can find the lighter side of this somehow. Yes. You, you have directed that reticular activating system, that part of your brain, and, and you were born with it, and yes. it'll start to filter and, and bring those things into focus. Yes, That's and great. it will serve you. And then another 
um, another thing that happens in your brain that is wonderful if you use it intentionally is something called Hebb's Law. And Hebb's Law is neurons that fire together wire together. And so you see something humorous and you like that and a couple of neurons or more than a couple, they fire together. Now you go neurons. out, neurons right. that fire together, wire together. And the more you practice the brain, this, I wanted to find neurons. That's the yes, neurons. Yes, yes. In the, it's, these are the, these are the connections. These are the nerve cells in your brain and through neurotransmitters and neurosynapses, they connect with one another. And now that you have given your attention and discovered something that's amusing, now those neurons fire together, making it just a little easier to do it again. And then you experience it again, and it makes it a little easier to do it again. And ultimately, this is how we create habits. Ultimately, this is how you become a ninja at being, being able to find and spy and see and experience humor all around you where and when others do not. Be a humor ninja. A humor ninja. <laughs> a humor ninja. Like and so, you know, so that's one of the things that you can do is see funny. I mean, some of the other things, because again, we want you to take matters into your own hands. Um, things that I recommend to people. Uh, in addition to seeing funny, a, an easy technique is simply to seek humor from someone every day, whether it's a family member, whether it's a student or a teacher or a colleague. Ask someone, what's the funniest thing you've heard today? Whenever I get in an Uber, I always ask the driver, tell me about the craziest, funniest drive you've ever had. When I'm checking into a hotel, tell me about your, your funniest customer experience. Ask people every day something funny that they experienced. And, uh, as, you know, in addition to you getting a humor um, kind of boost, the other cool thing about this is, again, we go back to one of the social benefits. Now that you guys are experiencing something humorous together, it's improved that bond between you, that relationship and rapport. And the bonus is now you have a piece of humor you can share and delight somebody else with. And I find more and more, I, I, not only I agree with you obviously, but I uh, find more of the uh, medical professionals these days uh, are open to this. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they get it. Uh, I had in a psychotherapy uh, patient uh, in his early 40s and he had had a two or three heart attacks, and he had to go in for an angioplasty, uh, some tests, and, and he was worried and he was nervous about it. We talked about what could he do to intentionally bring some humor to the situation, and he, he got the gist of it, and, he, and when he came back in after it, I said, well, what, how'd it go? He said, it went great. I said, did you use humor? He said, yeah. He said, this is what I did. I got a pair of those Groucho glasses. The glasses that you put on that have a big nose and have bushy eyebrows and a mustache, and I wore them into the procedure. And uh, one of the uh -huh. nurses said, uh, with mock seriousness, uh, "Sir, uh, your your glasses are going to be right here." She put, took them off his face. He put them under the pillow. You're going to need oh, these funny. when we're done with the procedure. Funny. And so what happened? He he, he said he felt that he was now part of the team. It wasn't yeah. that they were doing something to him, but he was bringing a positive attitude. He was saying, I trust you. We, we can, you know, I can lighten up a little bit about this. I'm nervous, uh, but I'm using my uh, a few little giggles to discharge that tension. The, uh, the medical staff was completely in tune with it. They went along with it, and everything worked out really well. I mean, but that was him taking some control and being an active participant in his treatment. Um, and showing that uh, he was willing to try to lighten up a little bit about it. Yes, yes, taking control. It, and that's one of the nice benefits of humor is that it, if you can find humor or laugh at your situation, you have empowered yourself and taken away some of the power of that that you find threatening. 
and you know that's that's a whole nother webinar that I would love to go into but just but just know that this really does help strengthen you and your reserve and you know that last piece that we uh, were talking about we said distract reframe refueling is is the intentional and purposeful use of humor on a regular basis because this helps provide you with additional physical um, psychological and even social bandwidth you know if, if you if you've ever had the experience not that I've ever done this myself but if you've ever um, overdrawn at the bank you know what happens with that you know the oh, bank is unhappy yeah. about that you know they ding you they fine you they they punish you <laughs> but and it's the same way with your body if you're constantly trying to pull from your body energy and and things that you just you don't have it's going to show up with more pain with more inflammation with more anxiety with more stress and so to implement these techniques every day on a consistent basis now you start experiencing the physiological benefits which make you healthier you've got to you know your your cortisol comes down your mm -hmm. your good cholesterol comes up your glucose goes down um, for those with kidney disease uh, it's a decrease in renin and angiotensin um, you know things that that can be harmful if you practice this on a regular basis you refuel yourself and it enables you to deal with long-term challenges and so you know one additional uh, piece of advice that I would give before we get ready to go into a Q&A is a, an accountability partner if at all possible I have an accountability partner um, who she she came to me because she deals she's she's constantly working through depression and so uh, every day I text her a funny meme or a funny quote or a funny link to a video and um, you know and many times she will send me something back and I have found that even in just the the starting of my day knowing that I'm accountable to her to help her find some humor it totally reframes my day because now I'm looking for a way to start my day with humor and it it puts me in a, a much better mindset great to have a reminder like that and with again you know people that have computers if you're on use if you're on Facebook social media of some kind or even just emailing friends jokes humor are, is, is flying around the internet yeah you don't have to look very hard you know to find it and I think there there's actually a uh, uh, built-in mechanism in, in human beings uh, to discharge emotional tension and we call it nervous laughter mm -hmm. when we're mm -hmm. nervous we have light for light anxiety um, it's a high pitch kind of a giggle it's kind of a tee hee 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 mm -hmm. uh, oh you mean my visa card is over the limit <laughs> yeah. uh, and that little giggle that little giggle is nature's gift to us. It mm -hmm. gives us a little way to discharge tension. And then when somebody says, you know, well, you're laughing, what's so funny? I think it's okay to say, I'm not sure, but I yeah. need to get this laugh. So I'm making my quota, you know, I yes. gotta have, and it's good for me. And that's we actually a, that's have a, a kind of laughter called, yeah, nervous laughter. How fast idea. did you say I was going, officer? Ah! <laughs> Well, yeah, a few resources um, that we have listed here and, and and some that are not listed on here, but we can certainly make available to you, as, as Steve and I talked about, uh, a place where you can find articles and um, papers and, and actually even a social community on Facebook and Twitter is the Association for Applied and Therapeutic Humor. And for those of you who can't see the screen, I know that you can get these later. But uh, their website is A-A-T-H, Apple, Apple, Tom, Henry, A-A-T-H dot org. And, um, and they are a great source. And also um, this April. Were you, were you a spy? How do you know all that, Apple, Apple? Wait oh. <laughs> Henry, I love how you do that. Thank you. That was great. That um, was it, good. They've got a, a conference that they have every year. And this upcoming year is going to be in Chicago. 
And, you know, this is where people who are interested in things like this, there's a, a you know, much more depth and detail and the ability to find out more. And there's even a, a three-year certification program for those who are really, really interested. And so you can, it's a nonprofit. You can, can go there and take a look. Um, the dialysis. Yeah, and both of us have been members. Of, yes. I just want to say both of us have been members of AATH, you know, for many years. And, uh, a remarkable um, organization. So, yeah. uh, good thing to take a look at. Get to the website, you know, look it over. And the conference, uh, which is re a wonderful conference, really fun and and full of learning, and and uh, is in April. And April, I have I'll put in a plug for Humor Month. Yeah, Humor Month is is April. Starts on April Fool's Day, and we got thirty days to celebrate the importance of humor in our lives. Uh, and there's a there's a website, humormonth.com. Go look there. Uh, virtually all the ideas and materials are free. You take them, use them, bring them into your family, friends, work, oh, uh, you know, good. like take them to the dialysis uh, center. Right, right. That's a good, anyway, good resource. April. Thank you for Big that. Time. Yeah. Um, the Dialysis Patient Citizens Education Center, um, their website, and if, you know, you've got that in your emails, but definitely go there for resources. They also have a Facebook community. So at the bottom of the face or of their uh, homepage, you can find it. But if you go onto Facebook, it's um, David, Paul, Carl, Ellen, David, <laughs> Carl, Ellen, Nancy, Tom, Ellen, Robert. Um, DPCED Center, um, and you'll find that on Facebook. Uh, AATH is also on Facebook. And, you know, a couple of other social media uh, places. I was thinking that, you know, when you're looking for humor, I, I have found a lot of humor related to um, this field on Pinterest. Uh, you know, you put this in, you would be amazed at how much humor you can find on issues related to this where people you know, and some of it is dark humor, but you know, many times dark humor is a great way to cope because the, the closer we are to tragedy and death, the, the darker our humor becomes. Um, I have a, a site, uh, highperformancehumor.com, and uh, would welcome you to join there. I have a plethora of resources. I'm also building some online um, classes. I'm going to have a free five-day um, challenge in January on nourishing your sense of humor. And uh, that's free. Again, if anybody's interested in that, um, you can email highperformancehumor at gmail.com and just put DPC in the, in the subject line. But again, a, a five-day humor challenge coming up in January to get you off on the right start for this year. And um, World Laughter Tour, something that is near and dear to uh, both of our hearts, and Steve has turned this into an amazing global community. Again, you can uh, get any kind of information by emailing Steve at Steve at World Laughter Tour. And again, if you put DPC in the subject line, um, we'll know specifically what kinds of resources you're looking for and make these available to you because we're very, very much um, devoted to helping you improve the quality of your life through humor and laughter. Um, at this point, absolutely. And we, we, we were, we're going to, we've made some articles available. Uh, DPC will, uh, yes. we'll, we'll have them, those uh, available. Yes. And yeah, make those available on this to topic you. that we're talking about. Definitely. And if, if at this point, if you have any questions and wish to unmute yourself, um, or type in a question, we have about, uh, not quite 10 minutes left, and we would love to uh, take a question or two if anybody has one. If not, um, Steve and I have no shortage of <laughs> additional information. Anybody you know, Karen, uh, when, I was a classroom, when I was a classroom teacher, I learned that if you stop talking or lecturing suddenly and say, now are there any questions, you should count to 10 and give people oh. a chance to think about what your question is. Yes. We're open for questions. Or even an Four, experience that you've had. Five, three, two, one. Well, if you do have a question, <laughs> join in and, or type it in. In the meantime, um, you know, I know never to leave it just on um, Q&A. 
But just, you know, some additional thoughts on this, and that is that um, this, again, it's not as powerful enough to, to just know this. It's really about the application. And there's other things that you can do to increase the likelihood. You know, you can manipulate your environment. And, you know, some of that is by increasing the likelihood, by, by keeping fun things around you. Um, your phone these days, if you have a smartphone, which uh, the majority of people do, uh, you can bookmark websites. You can, you know, have uh, go-tos in terms of funny um, podcasts, funny eBooks, um, funny YouTube videos. I have there's there's never um, a, an opportunity that I miss that's further away than my phone because at all times. I can either reframe, which is something that I do in my head, or I have my phone where I can pull it out and pull up something that I find funny. Um, it, manipulating your environment is also people. I will tell you that um, there are people who bring joy when they enter a room, and there are people who bring joy when they leave. And you, with the, the condition and the, the situation that you're in, you want to surround yourself with the people who bring joy when they enter the room. And yeah, you can help that by also being one of those people. But manipulating your environment by being really intentional and really mindful about who and what you surround yourself with. Um, any other thoughts on that, Steve? Yes, I wanted to point out that one of the articles that we're making available uh, that uh, Karen uh, wrote is called the the intentional application of humor with chronic kidney disease patients, and in that uh, it's a good summary of what we've been talking about here. But five specific tips uh, for implementation of humor by patients and staff, uh, for instance, at a dialysis center. Uh, so you want to you'll want to take a look at that. If this is intriguing you and interesting you, and I hope it is because it's good stuff, uh, this article is going to be very very helpful, very practical ideas for you. Excellent, appreciate that. And you don't have to be funny. And you don't have to be funny. That does take a lot of pressure off of people. Um, but those are some of the the top hacks that I have. Again, seeing funny surrounding yourself with funny people, and just upbeat people. Get rid of the oxygen suckers in your life. Um, take charge of your environment. And um, to um, yeah. have an One, accountability you, person. Uh, if I, mm -hmm. Let me jump in here. One of the things that I think, uh, especially adults, you know, we're born with the ability to laugh. We're born... Uh, able to recognize the lighter side of things. And then life gets stressful and we get admonished and we get criticized. What's so funny? You got to, when are you going to quit your giggling? When are you going to grow up? All of that's wrong headed, but we hear. And then we, we put away our, our, our humor. Uh, now, as an adult, I think one of the ways you can help to get that back is make it a habit to go into toy stores, not yeah. just to buy for kids. Right. Go find things that are funny to you that amuse you, have something on your desk. It's a wind-up toy. Um, I have I found a few little uh, sound effects uh, machines that I keep on my desk. So I get a uh, one of these telemarketers calling. I might push a button, and you're going to hear this. Right. Well, you know, I, it, that's funny to me. That's all funny to me. I think it's cute. But, you know, use sound effects, and when they, when you pick out something for yourself in a toy store and the clerk says, and how old is the child that you're buying this for? You say 46. Yes. It's yes. for me. It's for me. It's for my humor first aid. It's for my humor toolkit. I'm going to put this in a desk drawer. I'm going to have it handy. I need to take a break uh, once in a while, even if it's just a minute. The mind-body connection is rapid. And as soon as you can get yourself to shift to a lighter frame of mind, even if it's only for a minute or two, the physiological changes will kick in almost instantly and will uh, will last for more than the time that it took to generate it. Uh, some of the studies have shown that the uh, benefits, the physiological benefits of laughing 
will last for 24 to 48 hours. Yes. Um, yes. So great investment. Let me give one last tip uh, in the time we have left. And, and again, uh, this is a technique that anybody listening can use. And I call this moments of mirth. And this is a, a, really a way to harness a little bit of um, reminiscence. You've got holidays coming up. Chances are you're going to be with friends or family where you where you tell those stories that have come down through the times and are historical, and they just get funnier as time goes on or more outlandish. But I keep a journal of um, of moments of mirth. I, I now have that um, transcribed into Evernote on my phone again, so I have easy access. But if you can tap into a past memory that's humorous, uh, your brain can't really tell the difference if something is in the past or in the future. And, you know, that's really, that's great news because while this can work to our disservice, if we are thinking about something that might happen in the future, which hasn't happened, but we, it might, and that's anxiety, or we're reminiscing over something in the past that we wish we could have changed or we wish would have been happened differently. You know, our body doesn't know that those aren't happening now and it creates um, all sorts of, of negative chemicals and hormones in your body. But if you can instead tap into a past memory of something that was humorous or funny or thinking in the future about something that you can anticipate, a funny movie that you're going to watch or a funny person you're going to spend time with, your brain won't know the difference. You can experience just by manipulating your mindset uh, and benefit from these. And you never had to leave your chair, your dialysis chair, your, your bed, your bedroom, your home, your car. It's totally portable. And you can take these reframing methods with you anywhere you are at any time. Yes, and humor uh, almost always can be free and no calories. And no calories. If anything, laughter actually burns a, a couple of calories. So let's do more of that. Yes. Let's do more of that. Yeah, that can have to. Um, well, I hope that we have inspired uh, people to look for the uh, the funny in life. Uh, give themselves a, a break. You, you deserve that little vacation, that instant vacation. to do yourself a world of good. Uh, yes. Karen, it, it, it's you know, it has really been a thrill of a lifetime to be on this very joyful journey with you. And, 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 and there are hundreds of people all around the world who believe in this, advocate for this, uh, and the world's going to be a better place for it. Um, well, it's been so a joy. I really appreciate the them giving this opportunity. Again, we are, we are resources for you as um, as is everybody here we are looking forward to your journey and your happiness and wish you wish you the best and every laugh matters you right steve okay. you bet and it's very important Kat, is, uh, right. thank you so you much Kat. steve and thank you karen for thank you, uh, sharing the last hour with us we certainly appreciate that and i encourage everyone to go back to their center um take a smile with you and um Share some some laughter and humor, and develop your own personal humor toolkit. And uh, with that, we thank everyone for coming. Uh, please join us next month for our first webinar in 2019. And please complete the feedback form as you uh, leave our site today. Again, Stephen Karen, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Keep laughing. Bye. Bye.